good morning everyone welcome back to the lookout we got a new fire we're talking about today up in Reading. it's a fawn fire um took off on the night of the 22nd and moved out pretty well so um yesterday it was really active um spread about five or six thousand acres and burned some structures so we're gonna uh, jump in the map here and take a look at what happened Okay, so for a reference here, um, Redding's in the bottom. And um, this is Highway 299 here moving out across the center of the map. And uh, I-5 running up here towards the top. Um, we're looking north from Redding. In this image, Bear Mountain Road goes across the bottom of the fire. Uh, Oregon Trail, Old Oregon Trail goes across this corner, I-5 up the side, and uh, there's Lake Shasta at the top. On this map, we have a couple different lines, outlines. Um, this white line is where the fire was at noon yesterday. Um, it was quite small early in the morning, but it had north winds on it that it blew it up really aggressively before noon. By 1 o'clock, it had burned out to this yellow line. And by 6 o'clock, it had burned out to this first red line. Um, this mapping that we're showing you here was captured last night at about 9 o'clock. So before we zoom in and look around, I just want to um, bring up a layer here that I think is kind of interesting. This is a fire history layer of fires we've had in this area in the past. Uh, we haven't had a lot of fires in the past. Um, we've had the mountain fire over here in 2019. Um, we had the uh, a bear fire here in 2004. Uh, the company I was working for, we actually did the mapping on that. And I, what I think is interesting about that fire and this fire is if you look, you see that they're really similar size and shape. And we see that a lot in general with fires on the landscape that, um, say we have a north wind event. It blows often for about the same amount of time from the same direction. We've got similar fuels in both places. The topography funnels the fire in a similar way. And so you end out with similar outcomes. So the, the patterns of past fires on the landscape can tell you a lot about the potential for another fire. You know, see with this mountain fire, it was pushed um, by strong north winds, lined with the topography, and it ran, you know, maybe, you know, a mile and a half in a single kind of burning period before we put it out. One thing that drove this fire yesterday was, um, if we come around and look at it from the north, was the way that it aligned with the topography. So there's these gullies through here. And this ridge and these features, they help funnel the wind. So the fire that started here on this north slope, once it was up on top of this ridge, it was really exposed to the north winds that could just blow it south. And we see where the white line was, where it was at noon. Well, once it was there at noon, uh, the way that the topography funneled it to run just right down this canyon. That's what we call alignment. We've talked about that a lot in here. When you've got the wind is aligned with this drainage, um, which kind of amplifies its effect. It kind of creates a tunnel. And then you've got all this fire and it can just blow it across the landscape. So we'll turn off the fire history. Um, these quarries up here um, help to control this part of the fire. And at about um, early afternoon yesterday, around 3 o'clock, the fire, um, the winds really started to shift more to be out of the east. And so the fire then um, really stopped spreading to the southeast and started to back down this hill. But the way that the wind was um, coming from the east, it was fairly blocked by this, this range here. And so the fire um, really slowed down and backed down. So when we talk about flanking and backing fire, we're talking about fire that's burning downhill um, or kind of side hill. Anyway, um, as of last night, the fire was slowly backing down on his flank. Uh, one thing that really helped us out yesterday and one of the reasons that it didn't spread a lot um, in the afternoon was we had um, a ton of air tankers available. Probably, probably I'd say Almost all the air tankers, the large air tankers on the West Coast were on this fire um, during the peak yesterday. And 
as we've seen on the Dixie fire and other fires, uh, air tankers aren't that effective on the head of the fire uh, when it's really blowing. But what they were able to do is really paint these flanks, um, cool them down. And so that's uh, one of the reasons you didn't see, you know, the fire barely moved yesterday afternoon here along Bear Mountain Road. If you see how close the noon, one o'clock and three o'clock lines are, um, fire really slowed down on this flank. So coupled with the winds changing and all the, the heavy air attack, um, that's really what kept the fire from spreading farther south along Bear Mountain Road. Um, air tankers don't put the fire out. So, you know, um, something to say about a 6,000 acre fire like this is that it still has uh, potentially, you know, 15 miles of perimeter or more. And that's all line that's going to be need uh, needing to be um, you know, pushed in with a dozer or with a hand crew to, to check up the fire. The fire can be burning under the retardant through the vegetation, especially once it's dry. So the air tankers really cool the fire down and buy time for firefighters. So um, kind of round this out here. I just I'm, we're going to come in close and just give you a detailed view of where the fire was last night at 9 p.m. Um, the orange heat here is intense heat, and yellow is what we call kind of scattered heat where the fire is generally cooling down. So um, here's Jones Valley down in here. Um, Bear Mountain Road. So the fire, this is Bear Mountain. Uh, the webcam on Bear Mountain looks like it um, it got taken down by this fire. But it served us well. Served us well. Um, so we're just going to come here along Bear Mountain Road just to um, try to give people a, a decent idea of where the fire burned and did not. And if you're seeing this um, for the first time and you have a house in this area that's impacted, uh, uh, if you did take a loss, if you, if you don't know whether or not your house survived, I'm sorry. Um, Sorry if you took losses in this fire. Um, Cal Fire is doing a damage inspection, and they're they're really good about getting that stuff out in a hurry. That's not something we really get into here. Um, so just because your house is inside the interior of this fire, it doesn't mean your house is gone too. Um, so I know waiting waiting to hear is really hard, and I hope you uh, get the information you need soon. Um, last night the fire had kind of spread all the way down to this golf course. It was still hot, um, but it looked like it was holding here at this green golf course. Anyway, that's the bear fire. Um, that's the fawn fire. Um, we were lucky we had a lot of air tankers. We're lucky the wind stopped blowing when it did. Um, the Jones fire near here ran um, all the way down towards Palos Hidro, uh, back in uh, 2001 or two. So we've got a history here of, of this happening, and it's just um, it's one of those reminders that you know fire comes often here and. Um, all that stuff that we talk about with defensible space and hardening your home um, often is what makes a difference between your home making it and not making it. Um, and just that there's no fire-free option around here. Um, we're lucky that we're close to major air tanker base. Uh, but when it's hot and dry, you know, something like this can happen in an afternoon. So um, we'll be talking more about this fire. Um, we're going to have those. We'll have detailed maps posted on our website, The Lookout. And um, good luck to everyone out there. Thanks for watching. <laughs>